Apple has introduced a brand new MacBook Air, and this is by far the biggest change to the MacBook Air lineup since the 2010 release, which was the last redesign. So this is this is huge, guys. So here are not 5, not 10, not 15, but actually 20 plus things you should know about this new MacBook before buying one, uh, because there's a lot of stuff that Apple hasn't really mentioned at the event about this new MacBook, and here's everything you need to know. Also, guys, follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to redo the whole Instagram page. Uh, so follow me on Instagram at Zone of Tech. I'm actually doing a giveaway that ends this Saturday with some mouse cases, some premium iPhone cases, so yeah, feel free to follow me on Instagram, uh, leave a comment on that post and you'll have a chance to win a premium iPhone case and I'll do a few more giveaways in the future. So I yeah, grab some snacks and here's everything you need to know about the new 2018 MacBook Air. Okay, so number one, who is this for? What's the target audience for this new MacBook Air? Well, it's an interesting one because the original Air, it was thin, it was really expensive, and it was also underpowered. So essentially the target audience for that one was, you know, business users who needed something light and portable for emails when traveling, pretty much. Then in 2010, we got a major design change with full flash storage. And yeah, that was that was a huge change. And over the years, the MacBook Air became more powerful, uh, cheaper, and also with a better battery life. Last generation, by the way, had an insane battery life. You could get even 12 hours or even more out of it. And because of that, and also the fact that it was Apple's lowest priced MacBook, a ton of students actually bought it. So that ended up being uh, the target audience for the previous generation MacBook students. Over this year, the MacBook Air is actually more expensive than the previous generation. It starts at $1,200 versus $1,000. And it also comes with two Thunderbolt 3 ports, just like the MacBook Pro. So this one is in between that student laptop that the previous generation was and the MacBook Pro, uh, the Pro laptop that, you know, the MacBook Pro is aimed towards. And I'll cover all this in more detail throughout the video. Now, the second thing that you need to know is about the processor. So not a lot of people talk about this, but the processor inside this MacBook is a 7 watt processor compared to the 15 watt on the previous generation. So what I'm saying is that this is a Y series processor from Intel, same as on the 12 inch MacBook. And this is actually the i5-8210 Y processor and it's Amber Lake, which hasn't even been released for, you know, regular PCs and laptops on the market. So this is an unreleased processor, Amber Lake, and it's still based on a 14 nanometer process. So essentially what I'm saying is that this is closer, this new MacBook Air is closer to the 12-inch MacBook in performance rather than even the baseline MacBook Pro. So do you keep that in mind when, you know, buying this product? Now this processor is actually a fanless processor. You don't need a fan to uh, run this processor just like the 12-inch MacBook. However, did you guys know that a MacBook Air actually does have a fan so if you look at these images from the Apple event you can definitely see a fan uh, on the left hand side so yeah fan is there just to keep the processor a bit cooler than it should be but the processor itself does not need a fan in order to run so that was the processor but what about a GPU well same as the previous generation of MacBook Air same as the 12 inch MacBook it does not have a dedicated GPU the only MacBook that has that is the 15 inch MacBook Pro now the new Air actually comes with the Intel UHD 617 graphics and yeah, it's not great. So it's much weaker than even the uh, UHD 630 graphics, the integrated graphics on the 15-inch MacBook Pro, which are already weaker than the 640 or the 650 inside the 13-inch MacBook Pro models. So, I mean, yeah, you should still be able to do some very light, very, very light video editing here and there. But if you buy this just for video editing and gaming, guys, just don't do it. It's not meant for that. Also, guys, fun fact, the more RAM you have, the better the integrated GPU will actually be. So this 617 GPU is similar to the Kaby Lake uh, 615, for example, which does support 4K Netflix. So if you want to watch 4K Netflix, even though, you know, uh, the display is in 4K, you can you can do that. You can output to a 4K monitor and you can watch 4K Netflix. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Definitely not a gaming made GPU or even 3D modeling or video editing. So yeah, if you want to do any of those things, don't buy it. Uh, one of the advantages of having that CPU and that GPU is the battery life. So the battery life on this thing is absolutely insane. So you can get up to 13 hours of video playback in iTunes, which is, um, yeah, quite a lot. The previous generation of MacBook Air had up to 12 hours. This is up to 13. And all of this is possible uh, thanks to that low power 7 watt processor. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been possible with that high resolution retina display, which I'll cover just in a second. Speaking of processors, this new MacBook Air also comes with the Apple T2 processor. That's inside. This is a co-processor that's inside the MacBook Pros and the iMac Pro. And this is actually a huge thing. Um, so this basically handles the storage encryption. So it does all the encryption in real time so that it doesn't affect the speeds, the SSD speeds. It also uh, monitors the camera. So you actually get better uh, signal processing from the camera, similar to what we have in iOS. And then the boot sequence is also handled by the TG processor. So you get secure boots. It also turns off, fun fact, the microphones. So yeah, when the lid is actually off, the microphones are automatically turned off by the T2 processor so that, you know, hackers cannot really spy on you. So 
yeah, this thing handles a lot of stuff and it's pretty great to have. Now, let's talk about storage. So this new MacBook Pro comes with 120 gigabytes as the baseline option, which in some cases it can be enough for, you know, people who mostly want to do web-based work. But if you want to do anything more than that, 120 gigabytes would most likely not be enough. Now, the 12-inch MacBook, a lot of people said, that, oh, this thing is actually... Uh, is actually more expensive than the MacBook Air and it doesn't make sense because, you know, it's a smaller device, it's an older uh, device, it came with, it has last year's specs, it's weaker. And, you know, the MacBook Air is better in every single way and it's also cheaper. Well, the reason why the MacBook 12 inch is more expensive is the storage. So that one comes with 256 gigabytes as the baseline option. So there you go, that's why the 12 inch MacBook is more expensive than the new MacBook Air. Now, something that a lot of people talk about is the fact that this thing comes with not one, but actually two Thunderbolt 3 ports. And this is huge guys. Thunderbolt 3 is a pro level connector. Uh, so you can connect eGPUs, external graphics cards to this thing. You can connect the GTX 2080, even though it's not supported yet officially, but you can connect something like a Vega 64 and get in Insane graphical performance. You can even edit 8K videos by doing that, for example. You can play proper games by doing that, an eGPU. And then you can also connect 5K monitors, one 5K monitor, or two 4K monitors are supported. Uh, and then you can also, you know, get Thunderbolt 3 docks. So yeah, Thunderbolt 3 is the world's most advanced and versatile consumer connection. So yeah, I really wasn't expecting to see this in the MacBook Air. So yeah, that's pretty impressive that we have it there. And I promised that I would tell you more about that display. So we have the same MacBook Pro display, uh, 13 inch, we have the same 13.3 inch panel and exactly the same 2560 by 1600 resolution. But then at the same time, it's not really a MacBook Pro display. You see, the MacBook Pro 13 inch comes with 500 nits of brightness versus 300 on the MacBook Air. Also 48% more color compared to the previous Air. Uh, however, the previous error was, was absolute garbage. So yeah, 48% is not a lot. Also, no True Tone display like on the new Pros. Also, no DCI-P3 display like on the new Pros. So what I'm saying is that this is actually a larger 12-inch MacBook's display rather than, you know, the same display as on the 13-inch MacBook. Now, something else that not a lot of people talk about is in terms of the best clarity and the Retina display. So what I mean by this is that uh, every display that Apple sells has a resolution, a retina resolution, and if you want to achieve the best clarity, uh, the scaled resolution that you actually see needs to be half of the actual display panel resolution. So, for example, on a 2560 by 1600 resolution panel, like on the new MacBook Air, the scaled resolution that you should be using should be 20, uh, 1280 by 800, which, interesting enough, the new MacBook Air does not offer. So the only resolutions that we get are uh, 1024 by 640, 1440 by 900, 1680 by uh, 1050. So actually the same scaling options as on the 15 inch MacBook Pro. So that's pretty interesting. So even though the scaling won't be as clear as true retina scaling, at least you do get more screen real estate. And honestly, most people won't be able to tell the difference anyways. And this is what most people would prefer anyway, seeing more things on the display rather than, you know, having a crystal, crystal clear image. And even this one, the scaled options look really sharp, by the way. Now, something that I've noticed at the Apple event and in the ads is that the bezels look to be uh, quite thick. So they're 50% thinner than the previous generation MacBook Air, but that one came with some massive bezels. And from Apple's press images, the bezels actually look thicker, a tiny bit thicker than on the MacBook Pro 13 inch. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I'll have a look at those next week when I'm getting my MacBook Air. So definitely stay tuned for that. Subscribe and notifications for more in-depth videos and day one coverage uh, with a MacBook Air and more in-depth videos like this one. Now, the 12-inch MacBook is indeed more portable than the 13-inch new MacBook Air. But how much more portable is it? Well, the 12-inch MacBook comes in at 0.35 to 1.31 uh, centimeters thick. It's a wet-shaped wet design, so, you know, it becomes thinner. Um, and then the new MacBook Air ranges from 0.41 to 1.56 centimeters. And in terms of the actual weight, the 12-inch MacBook weighs in at 0.92 kilograms and the MacBook Air weighs in at 1.25. So yeah, the 12-inch MacBook is still thinner and quite a bit lighter than the Air. So if you need the most portable laptop that Apple makes, that's still the 12-inch MacBook. But don't buy it. Don't buy it yet because it hasn't been updated since last year. So yeah, new update should be coming hopefully uh, by March next year. So yeah. What about the MacBook Pro? How does this compare to the MacBook Pro? Well, the new MacBook Air, again, is 0.41 to 1.56 centimeters and the, the MacBook Pro 13 inches 1.49 centimeters. So yeah, that the MacBook Pro has a constant, that constant thickness, whereas the MacBook Air has a wet shape design and in its thickest point is actually thicker than the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now, in terms of the actual weight, the MacBook Air is 1.25 kilograms and the MacBook Pro is 1.37.
So yeah, the new MacBook Air is lighter and a bit more portable than the 13-inch MacBook Pro, but not by a lot. The new MacBook Air is actually closer to the Pro in size and weight than it is to the 12-inch MacBook. And actually, guys, fun fact, if you compare the sizes, the actual dimensions, the 13-inch MacBook Pro is 1.49 centimeters in height versus 1.56 on the Air. In terms of the width, they have the exact same width, uh, 30.41 centimeters, and the depth is actually the same as well, 21.24 centimeters. So exactly the same body. Now, something interesting is that we don't actually get Bluetooth 5.0 on the new MacBook Air, making this the only recent Apple product that does not come with Bluetooth 5.0. The iPhone XS comes with it, the iPhone XR, uh, the new iPads, even the new MacBook Pros. Yeah, that's that's quite a weird one. It's not that quite big of a downside. Essentially, if you have Bluetooth 5.0 enabled headphones, those would connect faster. Uh, the audio quality and the signal would be a bit better and the range would be better. And then also the battery life on the headphones would be better than, you know, when using a Bluetooth 4.2, which is what the new MacBook Pro, the new MacBook Air has. But we do get the brand new gold color interesting enough and also the apple stickers actually match the colors of the macbook airs just like the 12 inch macbook we don't get this with the macbook pros and we go we don't get this with the iphone 10 rs that would be that would have been really cool or even the iPhone XS. So those two products and the iMac Pro and the Mac Pro are the only Apple products with matching uh, Apple stickers. And yeah, this new gold color looks to be a quite a bit darker and more uh, yellower, or I don't know, it looks a bit more orange than the previous generation that we had on the 12 inch MacBook. And this new MacBook Air is actually made from old iPhones and iPads. I'm not even joking. It's made from 100% recycled aluminum, uh, 6000 series aluminum, just like on the iPhone 6S, for example. So yeah, that's, that's quite interesting. Essentially, you might, I don't know, if you've recycle your iPhone, you might even find it in your new MacBook Air. And then the microphones have been improved. We have three microphones and we still have a headphone jack on this new MacBook Air, which fun fact has been removed from the new iPad Pro. And now the speakers are actually improved as well. So we get 25% louder speakers. Now this is a bit concerning because the previous MacBook Air speakers were really bad and 25% doesn't seem like a big improvement. The MacBook Pro speakers and even the 12 inch MacBook speakers are amazing, especially the MacBook Pro ones. So yeah, I'll test those out as soon as I get my hands on the MacBook Air and also the base has been improved according to Apple, you get two times more base. But again, the MacBook Air speakers were really bad, so yeah. I'll have to test it out in person. And we now get the third generation butterfly mechanism in terms of the keyboard, which is much better than the second gen found on the 2016 MacBook Pros or the first gen found on the 2015 12 inch MacBook. We don't get a touch board, but we do get touch ID. So yeah, if you're coming from an older generation MacBook Air, honestly, it will take you some time for you to get used to this new keyboard because there is almost no travel, almost no key travel. So yeah, take some time, uh, but it could be more accurate. In my case, I, I can type much more accurate than on the previous generation, but just because uh, the keys don't wobble that much. And speaking of previous generation, for some reason, Apple is still selling the previous generation MacBook Air. Instead of a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds, it's now 950 pounds. So yeah, it got $50 cheaper, 50 pounds cheaper in like four years. Ah, uh, seriously, Apple. And finally, guys, probably the most important tip from all of this list is don't buy the MacBook Air. Honestly, get the 13-inch MacBook Pro from 2017. It's worth way, way more. You get so much more for your money. It's only 50 pounds more, and you get a much better display, much better display. You get much better performance. Yes, it's seven-generation processor, but it's not crippled by a seven-watt processor. We actually have the exact same body size. We have way better speakers, and the graphics, the graphics with the 640 are much better than the 617. So don't buy this, get the 13-inch MacBook Pro, not a MacBook Air. But yeah, do check out my previous iPad 2018 30 Things You Didn't Know video. It's similar to this one. And if you care about the iPad Pro, you might find that video pretty cool as well. And definitely subscribe and enable notifications if you're new to the channel and you want to see more interesting and detailed tech videos like this one. Also, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this brand new MacBook Air. Do you think it's worth it or not? Or do you think, like I said, the MacBook Pro is worth it way more, you know, by paying 50 pounds more? And also, guys, join the zone, uh, support the channel, and you get some access to some pretty cool exclusive features, such as some badges, which actually uh, you can use in the comments and people can see them. And they actually evolve the more, the longer you've been a subscriber and a member for. And then you also get some exclusivity when it comes to live streams. I'm doing one live stream every month and it's easier to read your comments if you're a member because your names would be highlighted. So I can answer your questions much easier. But yeah, this has been pretty much it. Please give a like if you've enjoyed it uh, to let me know. Also let me know if you made it until the end of this video. And yeah, this has been uh, pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. Zen of Tech, signing out. Cheers.